Hello everyone, it's Ron from High Tech Legion. Uh, it has been a while since I have tested out a headset. I am a big gamer, uh, for those who have checked out our previous reviews. Although, I, to be honest, I'm not particularly fond of a lot of headsets because uh, headsets are sort of a, either, a, either it compromises on the microphone or it compromises on the audio quality. And unfortunately, a lot of headsets out there in the market will compromise on both. And uh, you're kind of out 40 bucks or out uh, for the high-end one at uh, $100. So uh, you really want something that will work not just for game, but you also want it to be, you know, to stretch the stretch your money. So it also is uh, very useful for, uh, you want it to be useful for your multimedia and your music listening and also movie watching since pretty much uh, everyone is plugged into their computer or tablet or whatever, or laptop, gaming laptops, just playing on gaming laptops now. And uh, that expect the headset to be usable in those scenes as well. Uh, Cooler Master, their CM Storm line, of course, that is their gaming line, and we have seen, uh, we've reviewed their their uh, products before, and now they have a new one called the Pulsar. And as we've seen it at CES, actually, you've seen one of those bikini girls that they got from, uh, from CMHD.TV, and uh, she was sporting that. You can easily find it on Facebook. I suggest look for that photo and try to spot me in that photo. It's in the Facebook. Uh, page from Cooler Master, and uh, well, anyway, that headset is now uh, being released to the public, and essentially, it is a 2.1 headset that is designed uh, to be superior to the uh, CM Storm Sonus, which is actually it is replacing in that line. So let's just dig in and uh, check it out. Uh, I actually don't have the final product box; I have the pre-production model, so uh, the the box will not be exactly the same as the one you will find in stores after this review. Go, um, goes live. Anyway, let's just dig in and see what we can find inside. This is a pre-production sample, hence there is no uh, uh, external cover yet, but uh, essentially inside you'll get the uh, the same content with the headset there and the uh, with a detachable microphone. Underneath uh, there seems to be a compartment for the accessories so let me just pull that out and see. It is a modular headset so not just the microphone is removable but the cable as well. And uh, let me just show you what the headset looks like there. And uh, of course with any product comes the user's guide. Also contains the product information and uh, the warranty information. The cabling. Um, just unpack this. It's quite long. It's a two meters long, at least according to the stats there, and uh, rather the specifications. And uh, these are this is a braided cable, so it's a lot more durable than standard one. You have the you have a USB connector here, which is uh, actually for the USB power. It's not for the uh, it's, it's for powering the LED and the headset and the microphone. Is not really for actually delivering the audio signal. Now, for delivering audio signal, you have uh, standard 3.5 millimeter jack connectors here for the microphone and the headset, uh, rather the headphone. Green, of course, for the audio out, and the pink for the microphone in. And these are all braided. As you can see, they're quite long, and also have anti frame protection at each end. And this one is the inline remote. It has the volume control and the microphone mute. All right, so here we have the CM Storm Pulsar, the outer packaging, and uh, let's take a look at the microphone included here. And this one is a 3.5 millimeter connector jack, and it has a very flexible shaft to see there. And uh, let's see how to plug it in now here at the bottom. Now, unlike the Sonos, which has, can be plugged into the left or right side, there's only a jack on one side, the same side with the USB connector. Uh, if you notice there, if you look closely, there is um, a specific pattern for the interlocking uh, mechanism. So make sure to follow that. Uh, don't just force it in because it could damage your uh, microphone when you're trying to plug it in the wrong way. So uh, there's essentially two gaps here. One is a larger and one is a smaller one. So the smaller one will align obviously to the small one, the other side there. Then once you hit snap, then it is in place. There you go. And you can, of course, due to the flexibility, 
allow you to position it uh, up, down, left, right, or closer to you. Now, as for the, the USB connector, it's a very tiny USB connector there. We just grab the cable included. Here you have the connector there, and it is latching. You see the little lock inside. Just push it in. It only goes one way. Of course, when you hit click, it will be pretty much secure there. You can see that it is braided and uh, has that anti-fraying protection so it doesn't get easily damaged when you're uh, transporting it. You have the on-off uh, microphone here for toggling and also see some uh, volume control that is uh, sliding, uh, that allows you to slide it up or down. Well, let me just uh, pull that out. You'll see that it actually, before I pull that out rather, uh, you can see that it does light up and that is provided by the USB connection. The USB is not for the audio connection. It is merely to power the LEDs you see there and also to power the microphone. Now, notice there, there is no light in the microphone. That is, you can disable or enable it. See if it's enabled, it turns on, you see there, and uh, of course that is enabled by the inline control, you see here. There won't be any recording if it's not plugged in by USB, so it's uh, powered by that as well, but the volume mute will work. As you can see, these are braided cables, and they're also have, they also have anti-frame protection in both ends, the same with the USB connector there. Now, as for the shape here, uh, it's quite comfortable with the movements there. A little bit of sound, you can hear the plastic and plastic clinging there. Uh, but the outside is aluminum. And you can see that you can easily remove these by uh, Allen wrenches. Uh, in fact, I think that's what Cooler Master is going for. They want people to customize these. Maybe put in your uh, your gamer colors, your clan colors. Uh, you could take this to your, uh, maybe your LAN party or uh, just competition and uh, support your team's colors in those in there. But uh, it has uh, the same Storm logo in that aluminum plating there. And also, see the underneath these are uh, 42 millimeter drivers, and these are actually leather material. Let me just try to pull that out if it's not glued in place. Actually, it is glued in place. You can see there, so I'm not going to pull that out. Uh, but anyway, uh, it has that uh, seems to be very thick there, so it's quite comfortable. But uh, there isn't enough breathing room for your air there, so for those who have sweaty ears, that might be an issue. And uh, as for the body, of course, you have aluminum here as well, very solid, extends to the band at the top, and also thick leather material there for the headrest as well, quite comfortable. And uh, let's check out the uh, specs and uh, test out and see how I found this after several days and several weeks of use. Microphone recording test microphone volume 100% microphone boost 0 dB. Microphone boost at plus 10 dB. Microphone volume level at 100%. Microphone boost now at plus 20 dB. Microphone volume level at 100%. Microphone boost volume now at plus 30 dB and microphone volume level at 100%. Alright guys, I have been using the Pulsar for several days now and uh, in case you notice that uh, the, the, it does light up uh, on the side also the uh, control here also lights up that is powered by the USB now let me just uh, open up one ear here because it's hard to hear myself with uh, the ear cups on as for comfort it is comfortable although it is heavier than most headsets if you're not used to larger headsets uh, also the uh, leather material doesn't really allow for uh, breathing and you can see that I am sweating in my ear uh, for long periods of time but other than the sweat uh, the the best thing I love about it is, of course, the sound quality is just spectacular. Uh, perhaps the best uh, 2.1 headset I have ever tested. Uh, it, it works very well for gaming. Uh, a lot of the ambient noises it picks up very well without sacrificing a lot of the uh, mid, uh, mid range as well. The, the problem with a lot of headsets is that, especially gaming headsets, is that they focus a lot more on that, that bass and uh, that explosion and getting people to actually uh, sort of uh, 
it's not the same as uh, as in the pulsar where it actually manages to find a balance between all of the, those elements around you especially uh even though it is also fine-tuned for gaming and it's also very very good for music uh, especially heavy bass music and also for uh, multimedia usage but definitely for gaming it is quite spectacular i, I there were some instances where uh where, where, where it, i actually felt my uh, the bass was so good uh, in terms of the characteristic, characteristic, although this one actually has a 42 millimeter driver compared to the Sony, which has 53 millimeter drivers, uh, the bass felt a lot more impactful. In fact, I, my my uh, my arm hairs were standing in some scenes in with some games uh, because I could I could hear the bone crush and the uh, the bullet hitting my target, and it does it works very well in that regard. Um, there were some things that uh, I. I thought could be better. The microphone, uh, in this instance, obviously, uh, headset microphones can be hit or miss sometimes. Uh, essentially, they're not really, and, and for a recording level anyway, they're not expected to be as good as a, a condenser microphone for a for a audio recording session. But they are expected to record uh, your your voice, uh, travel, um, convey it uh, clearly to your teammates when you're playing. Oh, it does that very well, but don't expect any recording level quality or voiceover quality with the microphone here. And also, I love the fact that it is flexible, although I do miss the fact that uh, you can't move this thing anymore to the other side compared to the Sonus. Now, I keep on saying, uh, I keep on bringing up Sonus because this Pulsar replaces the Sonus in that line. And I, although I do not, I'm not sure what the price is right now because uh, this is under embargo until uh, July 30th. By the time you see this, it will be uh, the embargo will be lifted already, and the price will probably be revealed. But I'm assuming the price will be close to what the Sonus was, since they are uh, essentially EOLing that or end of lifeing that product, and it will be replaced by the Pulsar. Uh, very, very cool design. Very good uh, performance. I really love this headset. Uh, this is probably one of the in terms of audio quality for a 2.1 headset, it's it's definitely one of the best, a very good experience for gaming and also for multimedia. You really have to try it for yourself. But uh, there were, of course, some shortcomings I mentioned, but uh, easily overlooked with the fact that these headsets uh, work very well. And uh, you can read the full review. I elaborate more on some of the things I liked and didn't like about this review, about this headset rather, on that review because uh, YouTube videos, but people don't really like it when it drags on. So let's click on the link in the description if you want to read more. Also, you can check us out at Facebook, facebook.com slash HTL reviews, and visit us at Twitter, twitter.com slash high tech legion, or our forums at high tech legion.com slash forum. And once again, this is Ron signing out.